He can still attract a big crowd. Jeremy Corbyn rallies his troops in the north tonight. But in Westminster, the chatter has been very different. They're not talking about it in public, but behind the scenes, Labour's warring factions have been trying to answer a vital question. Can the MPs unilaterally dump Corbyn and have their own leader of the opposition? Rebel Labour MPs have been thinking about their options should Jeremy Corbyn win the Labour leadership again in September. Newsnight has learned that MPs on both sides have been in touch with parliamentary officials to discuss the mechanics of a declaration of independence at Westminster from their elected leader. Well, it's hard not to view the goings on in the Labour Party this summer without thinking that this is more than a fleeting domestic row. How on earth does it end? Can it carry on into next summer too? Well, it's been said that the two wings of the party are like a couple who want a divorce but can't bring themselves to separate because neither can afford to move out. Publicly, of course, no one in Labour yet wants to talk about a split, but it turns out there have been conversations about what could happen if Mr Corbyn wins again, what the implications might be of MPs detaching themselves from the leader, for example. Is this a solution or an aggravation of Labour's problem? Well, our political editor, Nick Watt, has been looking at the rebel MPs' options. Do, 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 down, do, be, do, down, down. It's hardly a summer of love in the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn has lost the confidence of his MPs, but this evening thousands of supporters turned out for him in Liverpool. His challenger for the leadership, Owen Smith, is putting up a fight, but thoughts amongst Labour MPs are turning to life under a rejuvenated Jeremy Corbyn. Four scenarios are being assessed. A full split is being discussed on the fringes of the party, but the two historic schisms in the Labour Party involving Ramsay MacDonald in 1931 and the creation of the SDP in 1981 have left a painful legacy for today's generation of MPs. So for the moment, a full split is seen as a step too far. There's clearly unhappiness with Jeremy and his leadership. People are worried about the 2020 general election, but I don't see any inclination for a split. I don't see colleagues talking about it. I don't hear colleagues that I'm meeting talking about it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's more of a media fixation. With a full split looking unlikely, some Labour MPs are exploring other avenues. In recent months, some of Jeremy Corbyn's Labour opponents have been dusting down the parliamentary rule books to see whether they could be designated as Her Majesty's loyal opposition if they can command greater support at Westminster. Newsnight understands that both sides from Labour's ongoing war have been in touch with parliamentary officials to see whether this is a realistic prospect. The rules, it would appear, are somewhat opaque. If a large breakaway group of Labour MPs wanted to go to the Speaker and claim to be the opposition without actually breaking away officially from the Labour Party, that could place the Speaker in quite a difficult position that in effect he'd be making a judgment as to whether the Labour Party continued in its current form. In the shadows, some Labour figures are looking at clipping Jeremy Corbyn's wings by reviving the tradition of holding elections to the shadow cabinet. Labour MPs who are overwhelmingly opposed to him would have the first say on changing the rules. If they were voting in shadow cabinet elections, I imagine they would choose a slate of members who they saw as more moderate, who were not Corbynites which would mean that you had a party leader um, who was perhaps from one faction of the party and a shadow cabinet which represented an alternative point of view. Um, it's hard to see that they would be electing many Corbynites to support him, so that would change things very fundamentally, I think. But reviving shadow cabinet elections would involve changing party rules which would have to be approved by the ruling National Executive Committee and by the Labour Party conference. In the end, the most likely outcome may well be a continuing standoff between Labour's opposing factions. Newsnight has spoken to senior figures opposed to Jeremy Corbyn, who say their best hope is for Theresa May to go back on her word and call an early general election to gain a mandate for the EU renegotiations. Who'd have thought that Labour MPs would look to a Tory Prime Minister to beat their leader for them? Breaking up is hard to do. 
Well, Nick is uh, with me now. I mean, Nick, just, let's just focus on those conversations with the Speaker's office, with parliamentary experts about what happens if the MPs break away. I mean, have they really concluded that can't work? Yes, I mean, it's interesting that the distrust is so great that the various factions, the two factions, have been holding separate informal meetings, scurrying off to the Speaker's office and indeed to the Clerk's office. And what this shows you about the Corbyn camp is that they are so worried about their control of the party, they're saying, could this really happen? And the message they're getting back is it's a matter entirely in the hands of the Speaker. And the anti-Corbyn people are saying, you know, can we really pull this off because they're so determined to marginalise Jeremy Corbyn? And what I think it appears is that the rules are mixed, but I think it comes down on the side of he or she who holds the title deeds of the Labour Party, which is going to be Jeremy Corbyn. And I think that explains why we are sort of moving away from splits and breakaways. Right. I mean, look, there were 75% of the MPs, three quarters of the MPs said they didn't have confidence in Jeremy Corbyn. How many of them are serious enough to up the ante as opposed to, like, we don't have confidence in him, but if the, public, if the, if the party want him, we'll, we'll, we'll stick by him. I mean, how many are serious opponents as opposed to dilettante opponents of Corbyn? Well, I mean, as you're saying, that 80% figure looks great on paper, but one of Jeremy Corbyn's most ardent opponents told me that they think it is a flimsy figure. And let me tell you exactly what this person said. 60 who said they had no confidence in Corbyn will suddenly rediscover their confidence if he's elected leader. So you will therefore have a functioning front bench. 30 will just sort of hunker down and be sort of diligent MPs. There may then be a core group hostile. Do you remember that was that phrase in that Great. internal <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn office uh, group? And then this person said, as for us, we will be progressively picked off with deselections. Right. I mean, this is why in the end you came to this option of just continuing standoff as, as, as where it all might, might go. What, what in effect does that mean? I mean, it, perhaps it means a Tory government, I don't know, another Tory government, but what can it mean that you just have a disagreement between the leader of party and the vast bulk of his or her own MP. Well, I think it might see, mean that we see our favourite verb coming back, which is unresignation. So some of those front benchers who resigned in the so-called coup will unresign and will go back on the front bench. But quite difficult for senior people to do that, because obviously we will just be able to play back what they said on these programmes on others. So that's the first thing that will happen. I think the second thing will happen is this so-called shadow, shadow cabinet. I think it's a bit difficult to revive the rules on elections to the shadow cabinet. So you might have what's being described as a sort of a parallel opposition where senior figures will just stand up, say their own thing, lots of pamphlets, not exactly stand by the whip. But some of those most ardent sort of opponents of Jeremy Corbyn are saying weirdly that their best hope is in Theresa May finding herself having to go back on her word and call a general election if she runs into difficulties over an EU mandate, because what they're saying is Jeremy Corbyn would struggle uh, to do well there. And then hopefully that be their chance. But by then, you may have a very different Labour Party and many, many more MPs from the left. Nick, thank you very much indeed.